Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today we will talk about convex lenses. Convex lenses. And um, this lecture, as usual as all other lectures, are part of the course, course presented on unizor.com. And this particular course is Physics for Teens. And we are, right now we are in the part of this course which is called Waves. So, um, I suggest you to watch this lecture from the website, from unizor.com, because every lecture has textual uh, notes, which basically are like a textbook. So, it's very beneficial, I think, not only to listen to the lecture and watch it, but also to read whatever um, the notes are. Um, well, some people are just absorbing information better in this case. Now, the same website, unizor.com, contains prerequisite course called Math for Teens, which I strongly recommend you to study, or some equivalent um, amount of knowledge should be accumulated, because math is absolutely mandatory for studying physics. Now, the website and all the courses are completely free. There are no advertisement, no strings attached, so Welcome to go. Now, speaking about convex lenses, let me start from something which we have learned before when we were talking about prismatic lenses. Well, when, when we discussed that, we basically talked about this particular kind of a prism. When the light goes here, now it continues perpendicularly to the top surface, and here it actually goes at the angle because if this is let's say glass and this is um, air the speed of sl speed of light in the glass is slower so uh, because of this difference in speed between air and glass um, there is this type of a refraction and uh, it's related to the Fermat's principle of least time. So to come from this point to this point, apparently it's not the direct line, but it's this line which actually is faster. Because it's a longer time. If you go this to this trajectory, the light will go longer within the slower part of the, um, of the distance. So there is also um, the law of refraction. So if you go and um, draw a perpendicular to the surface of refraction, this is perpendicular. So this angle is incident and this is refraction. So the um, law of refraction states um, that there is such an equation where ni is c divided by okay this is the speed of light in vacuum and this is speed of light in this particular uh, place now in this particular case uh, incident is within the glass and refraction is within air <coughs> now we have, oh, I'm sorry, it's a sign here. So we have derived this particular um, law of refraction from the principle of least time. Okay, so this is given. I will be just using this as is. And now, as the first step towards convex lenses, I will assume not just a single prism like this, but a double prism. Double prism would be with two angles. So this would be one angle, and this would be another angle. Something like this. Now, I have used this type of a drawing in my notes, and I would like to use the same uh, letters 
as over there. So that would be letter pi. Okay, so this is P Q O. This was one light one light coming here point A1 goes to this to B1 and refracted to this point C another light falls on another surface, so we have two surfaces and also refracted to this point that would be A2, B2 now um, this would be angle alpha 1 and this would be angle alpha 2 so these two angles define the prism double prism in this particular case. Now I'm interested in these two rays of light to come to the same point and I would like to find out how can I make it using basically the location let's say this would be x1 and this would be x2 so from the previous lecture about the prism if it's a normal single prism the further I am from the point P, the further will be uh, refracted, loot, uh, refracted uh, array of light would uh, cross the y, y axis. This is y axis. And this is x axis. Now, if I have double prism, now this distance can actually make the projection, the refracted ray to go into this point but since this plane is at different angle than this plane I can actually choose a point here and the direction such that it will go into exactly the same point now as you understand I'm planning to gradually increase the number of different angles to come to the smooth convex lens but let's do it step by step okay so we have only two okay now considering we have two um, now uh, how can we uh, use this particular thing we have to draw a perpendicular to the surface this one which is m1 n1 and perpendicular to this m2 to n2 now first of all what we can say is that um, let's continue this and continue this as if there is no uh, refraction now this is an incident light and this is refracted light so this difference I can call it delta 1 is the deviation of the refracted light from the original so it's not it's it's not an incidence or, or refraction angle it's an angle of deviation this is original direction and this is the deviated same thing here this is delta 2 now let's just think about the following if this angle is alpha between this and this plane now this ray of light is perpendicular to this line right and this is a normal to this surface so this is also angle alpha right because these two angles are corresponding with perpendicular sides now this angle is actually the incidence angle right between the light and the normal to a surface now this angle is also alpha because these are vertical this one m1 b1 a1 
and N1, B1, D1. They are vertical. But the sum of these, alpha 1, delta 1 plus alpha 1, this is alpha 1, is an angle of refraction, right? From the normal to the refracted plate. So I can say that this is theta r. And now I can use this thing, n i times sine alpha 1 equals n2 sine of alpha 1 plus delta 1. So this is basically the same principle, just in different angles. So instead of uh, incidence and refraction, I'm using incidence, which is actually an angle between the um, refracted uh, surface of this particular double prism and um, horizontal line. And again, refraction I uh, split into two, the same angle of uh, incidence plus deviation from the original direction. Now, let's say <coughs> I would like all these two lights to come to the point at distance f. Right? Now, how can I actually um, calculate this distance f in terms of the distance x and angles? Well, um, this distance f is equal to this minus this. Now this is equal to, let's just think about it, um, let's consider this triangle. This one uh, and this one. Okay, this is for one and this is for two. So this one is x1, this one is x2. So let's talk about the one first. So the same distance f can be calculated as a distance between these two points and these two points. Now these two points is, this is also alpha one, right? Because it's all the same thing, parallel lines. So it's x1, um, this divided by this is tangent, so it's x1 times uh, times tangent alpha 1. Now this one is, I can use this angle. Uh, which angle should I use? This angle. So if this is delta 1, then this is delta 1, because it's two parallel and the and, uh, and, uh, uh, cutting line between them. So <coughs> that would be x from this triangle, x, mm, this, this divided by this would be a cotangent. So it would be x1 times cotangent of, of delta 1, right? So again, from this triangle, considering this is delta 1 and this is delta 1, this is x1, and, 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 and I would like to know this length. So this length would be this divided by this is a cotangent, so it's x times cotangent. This is a big length. And the small length is x times tangent alpha. So the difference between them, which means x1 minus x1 tangent alpha 1, is f. But exactly the same thing I can say about the second point. Just instead of this 
I have to consider this piece. So from this I will subtract this and it will be exactly the same thing. It will be x2 cotangent delta 2 minus x2 tangent alpha 2. And that's exactly the same f. So, but my point is that if my x1 and x2 uh, satisfy these conditions, now alpha is known angle, it's an angle between this surface and the horizontal. Alpha 2 is also known. And um, how can I find um, del delta in this particular case? Well, delta I can find from here using alpha. So what is it? Um, delta is equal to, well, let's start with sine of delta 1. sine of alpha 1 plus delta 1 is equal to n1 divided by n2 sine of alpha 1, right? From here, my alpha 1 plus delta 1 equals arc sine of ni divided by nr sine alpha 1 and delta 1 is equal to minus alpha 1. So, we know alpha 1 is the angle of the, of the surface, and that's how we calculate delta 1. Knowing alpha 1 and delta 1, we can actually find what exactly xi is supposed to be equal, f divided by cotangent delta 1 minus um, tangent alpha. One. This is exactly the location of the light which will be refracted into this point where f is given. Now, but same thing I can say about the x2. And the x2 is also defined, properly defined. So, it, it, it's either or. Either I can find from given prism, I can find points which will project to this or refract it to this, or for given lights, I can actually find out what kind of angles I should have to basically um, project, to refract my lights into one point. But this is for double prism only, right? Now, on my way to convex, what's my next step? Well, my next step is, instead of two uh, mm, refracti refracting um, planes of this prism, I will use many. So let's call it multiprism. So what is multiprism? Multiprism is something very similar. But instead of this, you said this, 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 and this. Consider this to be straight lines. So this represents a prism with surfaces at different angles. <coughs> so what happens here? If these are horizontal lines. These are angles alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, alpha 4. But they are more and more... Um, inclined towards the vertical. What happens? Now, if I have a straight prism, then the further my light comes, the further it's projected here. But if these planes are at different angles to each other, greater and greater angle, this, this, and this, like here, then, if it's a greater angle, it will turn the light more towards the previous points. So, again, for each particular uh, shape of the prism, I can make, I, I can find actually the angles. By, by knowing these angles, I can find the location x1, x2, and x3 
which will be refracted to the same point. So this is one point F. And for each of these, I can actually draw exactly the same thing. I will have alpha 1. Uh, from alpha 1, I can um, calculate my delta 1, deviation of this particular. This is delta 1. Now this is delta 2. This is delta 3. This is delta 4. And from them, I can find the location of uh, um, how far from the y-axis my uh, ray is supposed to go to uh, concentrate in, in one point. So, again, why do they do it? Because this is a yet another step towards the curve. Now, what is the curve? Curve can always be represented as <coughs> infinite number of infinitesimal segments which are uh, inscribed into this curve, right? <coughs> so let's talk about convex lens. Convex lens is basically a body which is represented by um, in its simplest, simplest form. So it's a one-sided convex. So let's say you have some kind of a curve. So if this is y, this is x. And the curve is representing by some function, y of x. Now, if I have this, now this is perpendicular, and this is some kind of a graph of the function y is equal y to s. If I will rotate this around the y-axis, I will have a solid body with a curved uh, bottom and flat top, right? So, how can I, <coughs> how can I actually use this to uh, refract parallel rays of light into one point. Well, I have to really think about what kind of a curve is this so that these angles and how each angle actually is determined. Well, angle is determined ver very similar to this. If, if this is a sequence of straight lines, straight segments, then this re segment represents basically an angle. Now, if I have a curved, obviously I have to go by tangential line. So let me just make a bigger picture and you will see what it is. So whenever light comes to some kind of a curved surface, how is it refracted? How can I use the law of refraction? Well, Apparently, I can assume that this is actually a very small, but straight, flat surface. And the tangential line to my curve actually represents the direction of this. So I can basically <coughs> say that in this particular case, the refraction happens according to the same laws as if this is a straight line, which means I have to draw a perpendicular and this is angle of um, incidence, and this would be uh, angle of refraction. So that's basically how it is. So now, if I'm talking about the convex lens, so let me just go to another picture. convex lens and that's my picture okay so um, again this is my y-axis uh, this is my x-axis and this is my lens now I'm discussing everything in the two-dimensional <coughs> case because obviously when this thing is rotating the symmetry of the whole um, uh, rotational symmetry of the whole picture actually allows me to consider uh, just one light, one ray of light, and how it's reflected, re refracted to this point. Right? So it's all because of symmetry. I'm considering the 
uh, cutting uh, plane section of this um, three-dimensional figure which is drawn uh, by the um, it's formed by the plane coming through the uh, y-axis and the ray which is parallel so uh, within this plane everything basically all the events happens in this plane including the refracted light so I can consider only the two-dimensional um, case in this section plane okay now this is PQ O. This is the A, my point where the light goes. It goes to point B, e. <coughs> and then it goes down. So let's say this is point D. This is F. This is. Um, now I need tangential line which is RS and perpendicular to it line which is MN and this is point C and distance F and this distance is X <coughs> now I will actually use exactly the same logic as before so this is my um, incidence angle and as you see this angle is equal to the angle my tangential line forms with an x-axis so if this is theta i and this is alpha alpha is equals to theta i now why because this is perpendicular to this and x-axis is perpendicular to the ray of light which is parallel to y so these two angles m uh, d a and angle which my tangential line makes with x-axis they are exactly the same so i will use the alpha, alpha. now this one is my refraction right from the normal refracted light but I can actually represent it as two angles delta which is deviation C B F deviation from the original direction and this one is also alpha because it's vertical to this one so I have exactly the same thing and I can use the same equation instead of using indices I can just use without indices I can use it for one particular ray okay now let me see now it will be the same thing actually <coughs> now so um, from this particular equation let me just uh, state right up front how can I find angles alpha and delta well alpha is relatively simple thing alpha is uh, the angle which my tangential line makes with an x-axis which means that tangent alpha is equal to y first derivative at point x right because if you remember from the calculus that the tangent of um, of the tangential line angle with x-axis is the first derivative of the function at this particular point this is x this is OD is also x right so I know alpha now knowing alpha I can find my uh, delta from here right delta here I mean, it looks ugly, to tell you the truth, <laughs> but, but that's what it is. So I know delta. Since I know delta and I know alpha, I can actually use these two things to, uh, to find out some kind of equation similar to whatever I was before, used before. 
Okay, so how can I do it? Um, so angle CBN, this is my uh, refract, re refracted angle, is alpha plus beta. It plus, uh, alpha plus de de delta. Okay. Now, um, if we will let's call this point E. Okay. Now, the OD, which is sum of OE plus ED. This is my x, right? This is my x. Now, I can represent this x as sum of OE and ED, right? So let's find them separately using the angles um, and, uh, and the distance x, okay? <coughs> so, um, if I will multiply f by tangent delta. Now, if this is delta, this is also delta, right? So, if I multiply f by tangent of this angle, I will get OE. So, OE is f times tangent delta. Now, as far as ED is concerned, well, let's just think about it. I know the this angle is delta, right? So let's consider angle EBD. That's delta. BD, I know this is uh, y of x, right? This is the value of the function at point x. So if I divide uh, ED by BD, I will get a tangent of this angle. Or if I divide BD by ED, I will get a cotangent. So my EB, my, my ED is equal to, ED is equal to um, BD times tangent, which is Y of X times tangent of alpha, uh, delta, sorry, delta, delta. So this thing, X, is equal to f plus y of x times tangent delta. Basically, this is it. This is as far as I can actually go right now. Because right now you're asking, okay, wh what is delta? Well, delta is this. What is alpha? Uh, alpha is this. So from this and this I can find delta and from delta I can find and basically this is an equation. Now what kind of an equation? Well, first of all it's a differential equation. I mean if you would like to combine whatever I know about the whole thing into one formula that would be ugly again but nevertheless so this is delta, alpha is equal to arc tangent of y first derivative of x, right? If first derivative is tangent of alpha, then alpha is our tangent. Now this I should actually put here, so I will have delta is equal to arc sine. You know, usually ni divided by nr, I will put the number n. n is a relative um, index of refraction. This is absolute relative to the vacuum, and this is absolute re relative to the vacuum. But the ratio is ratio I I is the uh, relative ratio. So arc sine of n times sine of arc tangent of y of x. Uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, four. Um, minus uh, minus alpha, which is arc tangent of y of x, 
and now I have to have tangent of this. Uh, anyway, so if I will put tangent of this as substitute, you will see that I have, I have only x and y, and the derivative of y. So this that's why it's a differential equation, which I don't actually even dare to think about how to solve. So <coughs> it can be solved numerically using computers and certain um, algorithms. And it was done, in many cases, to produce ideal, perfect shape of the lens, which um, concentrate all the uh, rays which are falling on it into one point. Um, now, what's interesting is, um, people were thinking about this perfect kind of a lens for a very long time since probably Archimedes uh, and, and Newton and, and all the great physicists actually were involved in this. Nobody was, you know, quite smart to solve the problem analytically. I mean, some, somebody like Newton, they didn't really have computers, so they could not use the numerical um, approach. Um, now we can, and uh, there was actually uh, an interesting problem introduced by Wasserman and Wolf in 1943. Um, what if you have, instead of a flat surface on the top and perpendicular rays, this is the simplest thing, but if you have any kind of a uh, surface, question is how can you make this surface in such a way that it will correct all these um, different directions and, and still concentrate all the rays which are going down in, into one point. So how can you, what's the shape of this um, uh, surface based on whatever the shape of this surface is? So my particular problem was particle, but was a particular case when the flat surface is on the top. That's the easiest part. So anyway, uh, quite recently, like uh, four, or five four or five years ago, um, some uh, physicists from Mexican University actually solved analytically this problem. And uh, they came up with a really very long uh, formula which describes what's the shape of this surface. Well, if I will write this formula on the, um, on the board, the board would not be actually big enough to hold it. It's a huge formula. And if you want, you can actually s um, search internet for um, the problem of Wasserman Wolf, and you will see basically this formula and uh, uh, many articles about how it was derived, etc. So, two guys from Mexican University actually, very young guys actually, m maybe even students, I don't know, they have derived the whole thing uh, about five years ago. But that was a difficult solution, which is then <laughs> definitely outside of the scope of this course. My problem was to introduce you that this can be an ideal surface. None of the simple things like parabola or, 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 or part of the circle or hyperbola, none of these are perfect. All of them uh, do not have this perfect quality of every parallel light to be concentrated. They will always be somewhere around, so it would be a, a spot, not a point. Um, now, um, a little bit more sophisticated, so to speak, um, convex lens is when you have two surfaces and both are some kind of a convex form. That's the, um, the lens in our eye, actually, is how it's working. But we will discuss all the different kinds of how the image actually is, um, is built in our eye or in a, um, some kind of a photo camera. Uh, we'll discuss it in, in one of the later uh, lectures. So far, I, I was just trying to introduce you to a concept of a con convex lens, and in particular, the perfect convex lens, um, which, which actually concentrates all the parallel lights in one point. Um, all simple, like spherical, for instance, convex lines, they are not um, perfect. So they always have something which is called aberration. Aberration means that the shape is not perfect, and spherical is not perfect, and parabol parabolical is not, is not perfect. So, and that's why there is no one particular point, but there is a whole 
section. The further you are, a little bit further will be the point. If, if this is a spherical, for instance, the further it will be, it will be more deviated from one particular point. Okay, that's it for today. I suggest you to read the notes for this lecture. They have much better picture with relatively, you know, smooth, like a textbook style um, explanation of all these angles, etc. But in any case, eventually we will come to this huge differential equation, which I cannot go any further right now. So thanks very much, and good luck. <laughs>